Hi everyone, I'm excited to demo the Tublian AI Developer Agent, which is part of a Tublian operating system and is designed to work with human developers to speed up software development process. The agent can operate independently and only contact developers if assistance and clarification is needed. Now, this is an important point. Uh, this agent is not perfect yet. We are very early in our journey. Uh, sometimes it does struggle to fix a problem and request some developers input. Our idea is though to have this agent work on issues that no developers wants to work on. Maintain legacy code bases, analyze the root cause of an issue, fix bugs, conduct research so that you and I can focus on more creative work. Let's see this in action. Uh, to, to demonstrate, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, pick a very popular framework, open source framework. In this case, we're going to be using a uh, uh, open source project called JSON Crack, uh, which is an amazing open source project, which essentially allows you to visualize various data formats. Um, there is an open issue in this project. Uh, the issue is right here. I was looking into this. We said search not updating upon content change. Uh, so let's, uh, let's see this issue so that we can understand what's happening here. So I have this project, uh, uh, so I forked this repo. I have this uh, repo running locally. And what I've done is that I've assigned the agent as a collaborator to the project. So here is an issue. As you can see this, uh, like I said, this is an amazing project. Uh, on the left-hand side, you have a data, uh, in this case, it's the JSON data. And the right-hand side is essentially visualizing the data. So the issue suggests that if I'm searching for some node here, in this case, I'm going to search for members. And as you can see, it's clearly highlighting that node, which is perfect. Now I can always go back on this here and uh, change the data element and I change it to MEM. It did change, but it's still highlighting it. Obviously it should not be because it's not members. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to have this, uh, our agent to try to propose a fix for this. Ideally, our agent is designed to run behind the scenes where uh, open issues will be assigned to this agent and it will work independently. But for this particular demo, I'm going to invoke it so that you can see it in action. Um, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to stop this uh, Next.js server here and go to this uh, console where I'm going to invoke this agent. What I've done is that I've pointed the agent to the issue number already. And uh, let's see what happens. <clears throat> Um, so first thing that agent is going to do is that obviously uh, look up the issue. As you can see, it's have identified the issue correctly. It's a search not, not updating upon content change. Uh, so this agent actually works like 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 you and I do. It's going to look into the issue. The first thing is essentially is doing is looking at the project structure. Uh, what that essentially means is that it kind of understanding what project it's working with, the type of the project, the languages, the tools, the dependencies. This is very critical and important, especially when you're working with the legacy code bases because uh, it could point to a old dependency, old libraries, old frameworks. So at it suggests uh, uh, fixes it needs to make sure that it actually working the, with the current versions of the libraries and tools. So when it's done, it essentially figured the next moves to the next stage of the process, which is determine the verification strategy. So it's very important to when you work with legacy code bases not to just uh, propose solutions, also to ensure that it doesn't introduce new problems. So the verification strategy essentially figures out what kind of tools that it can use to verify its solution. If the project has unit test cases, it's going to use the unit test cases. If the project has compiler, linters, all the tools, essentially what, what that happens in that stage. Next is moved on to what we call is a planning phase. In this planning phase is essentially understanding the issue and figuring out how this issue kind of fits into the whole application structure. So it's kind of essentially determining the app flow, uh, which is also kind of critical how this issue fits in. So it's kind of figuring out how this each components, classes and functions can interact with each other. So um, like an app flow. Now it might, this agent might spend some time in this flow because I did as it understanding, exploring new content, it might have new questions. It's trying to figure out the answers for those questions. So this number essentially tells you how many times it's going to uh, iterate on that same stage. <clears throat> Once it determines that it's going to move to what we uh, we call is a solution a mode. In that case, once it's figured out, okay, I have enough component, I've identified the classes and functions that is related to this issue that I'm working on, it's going to move into the solutioning space. In the solution space, what we have done with this agent is it's just not going to drive in and just 
cranking out solution. It needs to explore and figure out what multiple solution, what options do we have? So in this case, it's kind of exploring multiple solution options. There are many ways to solve the problem. This is very particularly very interesting because each solution has a different level of complexity and benefits, pros and cons, right? This is something that uh, it's going to allow projects to configure this agent based on what kind of mode they want to operate on. Uh, so I've configured this agent to uh, right now to pick the the issue that the solution that has the lowest complexity. So that's what it's doing right now. <clears throat> So once it picks up the solution, it's going to go into what we call as an implementation phase. In implementation phase, it's going to make a plan. So it's not, again, not about just generating code. It's going to figure out, okay, once I generate code, how am I going to test that course? Uh, if I, once I test that code, how am I going to integrate that code? So what's that, all that stuff happening right now? So mind you, we still haven't generated any solution. We're just moving through the phases right now to figure out how what code we should generate, <clears throat> which is which is a very important thing to understand. The code generation is probably the easiest part of this. It's very important to figure out the right solution. So now the thing that we have done with this agent is that this agent is uh, designed such a way that it's flexible to work with various models. So it's not only um, uh, GPTs, L llamas, it is configured to work with any state of art uh, legacy models as well. So now it's going to the actually what we call as the first step of generating code. Uh, it might take some time depending upon what we're doing here. Then once again, uh, every time we do something, it's very important to uh, also verify that. So even if I'm talking about that, uh, this is an AI developer agent, in a way there are two agents kind of working in tandem here. One agent is focused on generating and solving the problem. Another agent is essentially verifying is the solution is actually solving the problem. So kind of a key way. So the project supports linting, so we are essentially using a linting tool here to um, uh, to propose a solution. So, uh, so looks like we are kind of done with the process. We will be done with linting. We created a pull request, so let's see that here. So I'm going to go back to the project page here. Uh, this is my repo here. I'm going to refresh. As you can see, there is a new pull request created here. So I'm going to go now. It just says pull request opened now. So it says propose a solution for 308. So when it creates a pull request, it essentially gives you all the steps and solution plan that it went through. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, it also gives you uh, uh, the results. Like you said, sometimes if that if, if it has an issue, it's going to ask you a clarifying questions here. Like um, I struggled with this. How should I fix that problem? So look at the code change here a little bit. <clears throat> so uh, turns out what he has done is essentially um, uh, added a JSON payload, which is kind of uh, interesting. I added a JSON payload, which kind of makes sense because uh, we were modifying a JSON data. So as the JSON data is getting modified, the use effect, which is the React event handler, needs to get invoked so that it can refresh correctly. So looks looks like a reasonable change, but let's see if that actually works. So I'm going to go here. As you can see, it switched to the branch. I'm going to just run this uh, uh, pnpm dev again and see if that has solved the problem. <clears throat> uh, it's ready here. Uh, I'm going to go to my editor back again here again. I'm going to change this to... Uh, Let's refresh this all over again. I'm going to do uh, members. It should update here. That's great. And I'm going to search for members again. Obviously, it's highlight. Now, the issue was if I change the node, let's see if it actually fixes the problem. If I change the uh, edit the node here, it should not highlight anymore because it's not members. I'm going to make the modification here. As you can see, that is not highlighting. So it actually solved the problem. Uh, so hope you uh, like the demo. Uh, ping me, ask me questions. I'm curious to answer any questions you guys have. Uh, thanks for watching.